Hey guys, what's up? I don't rarely give predictions of booking <laughs> for TNA pay-per-views because, you know, we rarely see them, with the exception of maybe Slammiversary and Bound for Glory so far. Uh, I mean, the other pay-per-view events have been reduced to basically two-hour special editions of Impact Wrestling or two-part two-hour editions of Impact Wrestling. I mean, Lockdown has been reduced to a two-hour edition of Impact Wrestling. It's not sometimes a one-night-only uh, broadcast that gets re-ran uh, throughout the month. Gen same thing, always though it's split into two parts. Same thing with Genesis, Victory Road, No Surrender, Final Resolution, you know, Sacrifice, you name it. You know, Against All Odds, you know, you know, you've had all these pay-per-views that TNA used to do, and now most of them, a majority of them, are nothing more than one-night-only events. They get re-ran, like I said, throughout the entire month. Or some of them are just two-hour or two-week, two-part edition of Impact Wrestling on, on Pop. And that's it. That's all they are. And... When one looks at that, to know that the only pay-per-views they got going for them are Bound for Glory and Slammiversary, you might say that's okay. You know, because you take a look at Ring of Honor, and they're not doing many. Actually, Ring of Honor is doing a lot more than you think. They may go, like, every other month, but they're still doing pay-per-views. I mean, they're not doing another pay-per-view until December. So, we'll give them that. They go a few months, maybe a couple months, a few months, or every other month. But they got the backing. TNA does not. So, uh, with that said, though, uh, apparently what a lot of us have speculated is TNA was going to find a way to survive, and apparently they have. Uh, according to reports, Billy Corgan and a third party have kind of invested the money needed to run Bountiful Glory, run the paper, you know, run the pay per view, run uh, this upcoming week's tapings of Impact Wrestling. I think even the a live edition of Impact Wrestling. They're going to have a live one. I think the cheaper route is probably going tape. So we'll wait and see on that. Um, but anyway. Bound for Glory. Here's an event that last year. Took place in North Carolina. And now this year is back in the Impact Zone. Matter of fact. Matter of fact. Bound for Glory. Um for the past several years has taken place outside of Orlando. As a matter of fact, the last time it was in Orlando was the first Bound for Glory. Yeah. That was the, that was the last time they had Bound for Glory in Orlando at the Impact Zone was in 2005. So, it kind of shows you kind of shows you how far TNA has, has fallen in a sense because now they kind of go back to the impact zone and do bound for glory again. Now you might say that's not a bad thing. It's a nice, it's a saving cost. It is. It is a savings cost, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, here's the thing. This, this shows that TNA financially can't even get out, can't even do bound for glory outside of Orlando anymore. They can't. They can't do nothing. I mean, you know, I, I mean, they did. I mean, they did Slam Anniversary there too. And usually, we're so used to either Slam Anniversary or mostly Bound for Glory taking place outside of Orlando, outside of the Impact Zone, because it makes it feel different. You know, it makes it feel unique. But now, that's not the case. Now. Now TNA is just impact zone bound. That's all they are. So, you know, it might be a good thing. Maybe they need to remain in the impact zone for a while to kind of rebuild things. But I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, getting to TNA bound for glory this year. Let's not look at the negatives. Let's look at the positive. And that positive being that they did get bound for glory going. All right. So, there's only eight matches for Bound for Glory this year, which I'm 
pretty sure is uh, it's a decent amount. I mean, TNA, uh, you know, it's one of those companies that when they put on a pay per view, they don't need that many matches because they allow the matches to go as long as they need to. You know, to kind of tell the story, kind of focus on the interest and everything. So the first match, apparently, of the night, which apparently they have to kick it off anyway with this. They did it last year. Um, is the Bound for Gold match. It's a Bound for Gold gauntlet match. Basically, it's the gauntlet for the gold match. Uh, for so those of you that know about TNA gauntlet for the gold, uh, it started, started in uh, when TNA first began. In fact, the first Bound for Gold or gauntlet for the gold was on the first weekly pay-per-view for TNA back in 2002. Now, the stipulation for Bound for Gold is the winner can choose any championship match of their choice at any time they want. Now, we all know, basically, this all this is is a, champ, is a gauntlet for the gold or a Bound for Gold old gauntlet match to determine who's going to be the next challenger for the World Heavyweight Championship of TNA. Now, if Cody Rhodes makes his debut in-ring for TNA, Expect him to be part of this. Expect Cody Rhodes, or Cody, as they call him, to be part of Bound for Gold. So expect him maybe to be part of that. Don't be surprised if you hear some music you've never heard before, and then out, and then you see maybe on the screen it says Cody, and out comes Cody Rhodes. But anyway, so far the announced participants, and there could be more, like I say, Cody could be one of them, are Tyrus, Robbie E., Jesse Garters, Baron Dax, Grado, Mahabal Shari, G, Rockstar Spud, Braxton Sutter, Eli Drake, and Balsi Baraka. Now, like I say, the winner of this match gets a shot at a championship of their choosing anytime they want. Now, the Tribunal, which is a tag team here, as well as the Bromans, you would think if one of them won, they would go after the tag team titles, which would make sense to keep that tag team division going, or, you know, intact. But if I was to book this event, from a booking standpoint, I would have to go with the with a wild card. I, I really would. Booking standpoint, I don't want Tyrus to do it for a second year in a row because that would make him too dominant. I would have to go with Eli Drake. I really would. Here's why. Apparently they had a segment where Eli was trying to talk a deal with uh, Tyrus. So if that deal involves Bound for Gold, then I would expect Eli Drake to win unless they pull a swerve. And like I said, we have a surprise entrant, either Cody or someone else, come out and win the match. And thus they get the shot. We'll just have to wait and see. But booking-wise... I would have to go with Eli Drake. I think as a prediction as well, I have to go with Eli. All right, the next match. Maria versus Gail Kim. Now this, I will give TNA credit, whether we like it or not, is a storyline that they've been building for the past few year, past few several months uh, since Maria's come in, uh, come into the company. Uh... Apparently, you know, they kind of finally alluded to how Maria views TNA wrestling. Now, she doesn't view it as a wrestling business, but as an entertainment business. So, apparently, she's, be, she's being portrayed as the entertainer, the sports entertainer, if you will. So, that kind of gives you an idea, maybe, of how Maria's being viewed here. Like, hey, I'm not a wrestler. I'm an entertainer. I'm a star maker. I mean, in fact, she, she says something like that in the one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, she had in that uh, interview she and Gail Kim had uh, this past week, but I have to go with Gail Kim. I mean, you're putting her in the Hall of Fame. Uh, basically, you're preparing Maria to feud with Brandy, and Maria does not need to Brandy Rhodes, that is, and Maria does not need the Knockouts title to do that because you can't all, all of a sudden make Brandy Rhodes the next Knockouts champion by beating Maria. No, I expect Gail Kim to win. I expect Allie to make an impact. Maybe play off the... You know, because here's the thing about Allie. Everybody says she's Cherry Bomb. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah, it is Cherry Bomb. 
Yeah, it is Cherry Bomb. And like I said, I expect Allie to make some kind of impact in costing Maria the match. And I've always thought, like I was trying to say, I th I've always had this feeling that... I've always had this feeling that they're going to try to play up an idea that maybe... Ali got amnesia, like maybe something happened where, I don't know, Maria attacked her or something happened because of Maria and Maria, knowing who she was as a wrestler, didn't want her, uh, like, maybe against her, maybe saw her as a threat. I will, I'm not saying that they would go in that direction, but if they're going to go with Ali getting some payback on Maria, they're going to go here uh, with with this. They're going to do it here. And maybe maybe they will play off the amnesia uh, routine, and maybe they will but say that hey, maybe they'll have Ali say hey you you know I know who I am, I'm Cherry Bomb, you made me forget who I was because you and maybe her husband attacked her I don't know, so I, I'm not saying again I'm not saying they're going to go in that direction, but um, they they might go in something you know similar to that, where Ali will basically remember that she is indeed a wrestler. But she couldn't remember that she was a wrestler due to the fact that maybe she had amnesia or something. I don't really know. But, yeah, Allie, uh, I got a feeling, is going to make an impact here. Uh, she's going to make sure Maria loses. And I got a feeling, of course, Gail Kim's going to go into the Hall of Fame. I mean, they wouldn't put, I mean, yeah, Gail Kim's going to the Hall of Fame. Like I said, they wouldn't put her in there if they weren't going to plan on making her the first TNA Hall of Famer, active Hall of Famer to be a champion as well. So I expect Gail Kim to make history by becoming the first active Hall of Fame competitor with that company to be a champion as well. Expect that. Well, the second one maybe, I don't know. But expect it. Expect it. But yeah, booking-wise, if I was to book the match, I would book Maria basically getting her butt kicked for a while before maybe she tries to get some help, and then it helps... Uh, maybe in the form of Sienna and her other friend, and then they get stopped by Allie, who I guess suddenly realizes she is a wrestler from a past life, and maybe, you know, you know, as Cherry Bomb. So again, I expect Allie to help make sure Maria loses the title, and I expect Maria to get a butt kick throughout the match. So, in prediction wise, you got to go with. So booking wise, I almost predict a squash, almost a squash. By Gail Kim on Maria. And prediction wise. Got to go with Gail Kim walking out with the knockouts title. Um, next match is Moose against Mike Bennett. Uh, this was kind of a quick uh, <laughs> switch around. If you know what I mean. Because you know Moose came in as a heel. As a, uh, a, a associate of Mike Bennett. And that went sour suddenly. It's like, I guess the fans got so behind him that I will give TNA credit. They realized, you know what? We can't keep him a heel this long. You know, fans still want to chant him, chant his name. So, you know, here you go. And it's a battle of Ring of Honor stars and on a TNA pay-per-view. Uh, and the way they're building it, I expect a good match, but I expect Moose to come out dominant was a dominant win uh, in the end, end on Mike Bennett. And I expect basically, storyline-wise, a bad night for the Bennett's, you know, so I expect that to happen. So I expect a decent match out of the two, but I expect in the end moves to go over in a dominant fashion. Uh, next match is for the Impact Grand Championship. It's a new title that Billy Corgan introduced. It replaces the King of the Mountain Championship that was formerly the Legends Championship and then the Television Championship. And now it is the... It, and now it is a whole new championship, whole new belt. It is the Impact Grand Championship. It is a championship that a championship that is defended in a unique hybrid of a match. Basically, it's a wrestling match, but it's decided. But it's done in three. It's done by three rounds, three maybe five rounds. I don't know. And if it goes all the way, all three rounds, five rounds. Then it's up to the judges, just like in an MMA event, to make the decision of who wins. So, but it's still treated like a wrestling match, pinfall submission. Uh, but here it's Aaron Rex, formerly Damian Sandow, against Eddie Edwards. Now, for, Drew Galloway was supposed to be there. He injured his ang he injured himself, injured his ankle or something, so he can't compete. But from a storyline and in character perspective, 
uh, he has vowed to be there no matter what. So it is going to be Aaron Rex against Eddie Edwards. Um, you know, I know David Hero predicted Drew Galloway to win this or would book Drew Galloway to win this. And that might be good if he was competing. But I think now you got to go with Aaron Rex. You got to go with Aaron Rex. Uh, as the chant, you know, as the one walking out, because you wouldn't put so much focus on this guy. So I expect Aaron Rex to walk out uh, the first ever Impact Grand Championship and be once again TNA's way of showing WWE, hey, look, we gave a singles championship to a guy you could have made a singles champion in your company. Go figure. But I expect Aaron Rex, booking wise, I think if I was to book it, I'd definitely book Aaron Rex to win. Prediction wise, you got to go with Aaron. Next matchup the TNA World Tag Team title match, the Great War match, which I'm assuming is going to be a, according to Wikipedia, a no disqualification, basically a hardcore match. It is DK against the Broken Hardys, the Hardy Boys. Um, I expect, um, I expect basically a fun match here. I expect a wild, crazy match here uh, because they've shown what they can do with the delete or decay segments so i expect a fun wild and crazy uh, matchup here i expect bob wire i expect uh thumbtacks i expect maybe a flaming table or something i don't really know but expect any kind of hardcore weaponry you could think of and haven't thought of to be used in this matchup and expect one of the ladies Mostly maybe Rosemary to get put through a barbed wire table if that happens. So uh, in the end, though, I exp in the end, booking wise, because the Hardys have been getting a lot of attention on TNA uh, with their uh, little uh, documentaries, if you will, little uh, films, if you will, the segments like Delete or Decay and Final Deletion. Then I expect the Broken Hardys, the Hardy Boys, booking-wise, it would make sense. If I was booking the match, I would book the Hardys because what they've done for TNA, by getting some eyes on the product, getting people talking, or eyes on the company and getting people talking, I expect the Hardys to walk out the World Tag Team Champions. Prediction-wise, I predict that to happen as well. And then you got the main event. The TNA World Heavyweight Championship, no holds bar, Lashley against EC3. Now, they've been building up Lashley as a destroyer. Basically, what it seems is, from what I've... I mean, what a difference this makes. Because last year, uh, around this time, or a little earlier last year, around this time, you know, Bobby Lashley would be one of those guys that would fall to EC3. In other words, he would get hit with a one percenter and that's it. But now they basically have revamped Lashley. They've rebuilt Lashley. And it looks like from a character perspective, they made him just be like, hey, you know, I'm sick and uh, basically from what I'm, I'm noticing um, is they've had they've rebuilt Lashley to the point that he's a more, more of a get in the ring, get the job done, get out kind of deal, you know, get, you know, basically they're booking him almost like a Brock Lesnar in a sense, their version of Brock, basically where he goes in the ring, kicks ass and then leaves and then that's it. So. You know, that, that's why, you know, you have Lashley booked the way he is. And that's why, from a character's perspective, he works so well, you know, comes off so well on screen. Because he basically is being, you know, himself. He's being, well, not ne necessarily just being himself, but he's being the MMA self. In other words, he's he's portraying how MMA fighters look at pro wrestlers. Like, yeah, you guys are nothing. I can go through you just like that. And... I, I like it. I mean, I give him credit. They're letting Lashley come off basically as an, a guy that, hey, I compete in the MMA against tougher against guys that are tougher than what I'm competing here in Impact Wrestling. You know, the guys here in Impact Wrestling are nothing. So, yeah, I'll give TNA credit for doing that. Uh, EC3, I know some people may or may not like him being a babyface, but you know what? I think it works because fans are behind him. They They've been behind him even when he was a heel. So, you know, Derek Bateman, give him credit. He's really gone far ever since becoming EC3 in TNA. And he's really become into his own. So, um, I predict a great matchup here. I predict these guys are going to have the match of the night. 
Booking wise, I have to go with EC3. You know, you wouldn't be building him up to this moment, and you wouldn't be building Lashley up to be this unstoppable force if you weren't going to have somebody ready to stop him and I'll put a stop to him. And that's why I would book EC3 in possibly the match of the night to do it. Prediction wise, I have to go with EC3 as well. So it's kind of even all the way. It's basically. You know, same. It's basically the same choice all the way around on both the prediction and booking wise. So uh, that's all I have to say. I mean, I know there might be an X division match. Again, we don't know who D DJZ will face. Um, uh, but overall, that's just my book, my booking, and uh, my basically my TNA Bountiful Glory 2016 preview. And let me know what you guys think down below, and I'll talk to y'all later.